Number 23. Convert an absolute pressure of 7 times 10 to the 5th newtons per meter square to gauge pressure in pounds per inches squared. All right. So first thing is you need to know the relationship between gauge pressure and absolute pressure. And we have this little formula that the gauge pressure will equal the absolute pressure, right, minus then 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. And the all the units here have to be in pascals or newtons per meter squared. Doesn't matter to me. They're the same thing. So first thing is I need to take this absolute pressure that they gave me and first find the gauge pressure. Okay, in newtons per meter square or AKA Pascal, it doesn't matter, right? They're the same thing. So gauge pressure, I'm just going to abbreviate it now, GP, will equal that absolute pressure of 7.00 times 10 to the fifth, minus then 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. And take out the handy dandy calculator if you need it, and we will calculate it, right? So we'll do this very simply, and it comes out to about 5.987 or so, 5.987 times 10 to the, uh, looks like fifth, right? Times 10 raised to the fifth. And that should then be in, I'm gonna leave it in Newtons per meter squared, all right? So essentially now what we need to do is we need to now convert this value here that we just found into pounds per inches squared, all right? So the whole point here is somehow we have to get from, and I'll write it on the upper right-hand side, Newtons per meter squared, and somehow we have to now convert this into pounds per inches squared. So we need to know a relationship, all right? Um, maybe we have it, maybe we know it in a single step, maybe we don't, but we need to know a relationship between newtons and pounds, or figure out the relationship between them, and then meters and inches, all right? And that's how we're going to approach this. So let me rewrite this value over here. I'm going to write the five. 0.987 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared. And I'm gonna do this all in one step. You can break this up into three steps as I've discussed way back in the beginning. So took it, take a look, I think, at our first video for physics. You'll see me do it. Uh, I think that problem was a three-step uh, conversion problem. You'll see me, uh, you'll see how I break it up that way. Uh, but I'm just gonna do it all in one step here. So First thing is I need to figure out how the how do I get from like newtons to pounds. So first thing is let me uh, let me bring this up. Force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? So the you know that the mass here is in kilograms, acceleration is in meters per second squared, and when you take these two values and multiply them together, you get a force which is in newtons, correct? So if I were to plug in a value of one kilogram here into the mass, what would the force of that one kilogram be? Well, you simply plug it in and you multiply it by 9.8, right? And you realize that it's 9.8, obviously. And what are the units then here? Well, the units are newtons. So what did we just realize? We just realized that one kilogram is equivalent to 9.8 newtons, all right? Assuming that you are on the surface of Earth, which uh, I have to assume that this is the case uh, for this problem. So this is the first step. I'm going to plug in my Newton value in the denominator here because I want them to cancel. And then I'm going to plug in my kilogram value in the numerator. And now I know the relationship that there's 9.8 Newtons for every one kilogram. So see you later, Newton. Now, I need to get from kilograms now into pounds. And this one you might have to memorize or you can look it up. It doesn't matter. You would find that there are 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. All right. So... Now I can take that value and plug it on in, right? Kilogram on the bottom here, why? Because I need them to cancel, so they have to go on opposite sides. Pounds on the top, and now I know that there's 2.2 pounds for every one kilogram. So see you later, kilogram. Now notice, if I were to stop my conversion here, if I were to put the equal sign, I would have a value of pounds per meter squared. Those are the only units that are left. But I don't want pounds per meter squared, I want pounds per inches squared. So now I'm gonna focus on getting rid of the meters in the denominator. If that exists in the denominator, I have to put it now in the numerator so that they cancel, right? And you probably notice one thing, you're like, wait a minute, I have one meter here and two here, how the heck is that gonna work? Well, just bear with me for a second, all right? I'm gonna plug in centimeter down on the bottom. Why am I doing that? Well, it's because I know, just you know, off the top of my head, I know that there is 2.54 centimeters in one inch. So that's how I'm doing this conversion. You may know the amount of 
inches there are in a meter. I don't know it off the top of my head. So I have to do it in a couple of steps. So I'm going to plug in then the first, I'm going to plug in the relationship between meter and centimeter. You know this, 100 centimeters and one meter. But I have to take this value and square it. That's how the twos will cancel now. Okay, so there's going to be two meter there, two meter there, they cancel. I'm going to be left with centimeter squared, but I don't want centimeter squared. I want inches. So now I got to bring the centimeter on the top and the inches on the bottom. And I plug in then the value that I know the uh, conversion is, right? I plug in the value of the conversion, 2.54 centimeters for every one inch. But wait a minute, I need two of them, so I got to square it. And la la. There's the answer. All right, so just plug it on into the calculator now. So 2.9 eight seven times ten to the fifth multiplied by two point two multiplied by two point five four squared and then divided now by please place parentheses here divided by nine point eight times then one hundred squared and then close those parentheses for the denominator and now we're going to get a value of about eighty six point seven right eighty six point seven and this would be in pounds per inches squared and um that's it. I mean, that's the value. And then it says this value is stated just to be just less than 90. Is it? I, is that just less? I don't, I don't know. What does it mean by to, what does it mean to be just less? Right? I cannot state whether this is just less than that. You might say it's just less and I might say, well, it, not to me. So I don't know. Seems like it. It might not be. We can talk about this for an hour, but I'm not going to do that. Take care, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.